class, pastry cooking class. We're gonna make apple pie today. Um, we're gonna make pie dough, ostreusel, apple pie filling, and then we're gonna assemble and bake it. So we got a lot going on. Um, first, we're gonna start with pie dough. So all the ingredients I've given you are labeled for what they are, the amounts, and then what recipe has which thing. So it should be pretty straightforward. Um, we're gonna take our all-purpose flour, our sugar, and our salt. We have all of our dry ingredients in here. We're gonna mix that a little bit first so everything gets incorporated nicely. So if you have a mixer, awesome. If you want to do it old school, mix it by hand or with a pastry blender, that is also okay. Just might take you a little bit longer. Okay, just want to make sure that you kind of break up some of the clumps of flour and mix the sugar and salt in properly. Then while that's on, I'm going to grab my cold cube butter out of the fridge. is between piece size and marble size pieces. There can be varying sizes. It's okay if there's a little bit bigger. You can break that up later. Um, but we're just going to mix that nice, nicely together. One of the main parts of pie dough is you want to keep your ingredients as cold as possible for as long as possible. Because if your butter gets too warm, it's going to mix into your flour and make like a sticky mess and you don't want that. So that's why I have ice water here. And I also kept my apple cider vinegar in the fridge until I was ready to make the pie dough. So this has been mixing for a few minutes now. I think we're about there. So if you look at kind of the butter in there, we have some pea-sized pieces and we have a couple bigger ones. That's what you want to look for. The, the butter is incorporated in the flour a little bit. So it looks, it's a different color. Break up a couple pieces with my hand real quick and then we will continue. Alright. So, water and ice so we can stay as cold as possible. You want to take the ice out before you obviously use it. You want about a three quarters cup of water. I'm going to put my apple cider vinegar in there and then I'm going to continue mixing my pie dough while I stream in the wet ingredients. I like doing it this way just because I feel like it disperses more evenly. This is just like a wet clump in the middle. So when you're mixing pie dough, you also want to make sure you mix it just until everything's incorporated. If you mix it too too long, you'll have a tough pie dough and it'll also be harder, harder to roll out. You'll develop too much gluten and then it'll spring back when you try to roll it, so it'll be too difficult to work with. together, but we're going to knead it together a little bit. If you have some dry bits on the bottom, that's okay, so we're going to kind of put it together outside of the bowl. Okay, so now we have our pie dough. We're going to kind of knead those dry bits in a little bit, but not too long, because again, you don't want to develop too much glue. The apple cider vinegar kind of helps tenderize your pie dough a little bit, so it gives you a little bit more wiggle room, but you still want to make sure that you do not need it too much. So this gives you about two 9-inch pie shells, or if instead of oat strusel you want to do a double crust, it will give you a double crust pie. So you can either hang it together in one piece, or you can cut it in half and divide it. Um, and when you're flattening it, you want to flatten it as much as you can because it'll cool faster in the fridge and it'll also be easier to roll out. So we're going to put this in our plastic wrap. We're going to throw it in the fridge. 
on your pie dough is completely chilled. It's going to be a little squishy still, but it's, it's going to be a little firm. So once that's ready, we're going to roll it out and make our pie shell. In your kit, I've included bread flour for dusting so that your pie dough doesn't stick to the counter or the table. I like bread flour more because it is a harder flour, so it's less likely to incorporate into what you're rolling out. So we're going to dust the table first with a healthy amount of flour. Dust a little bit on top so the rolling pin doesn't stick to the pie dough. And then we're going to roll it out. So you don't necessarily need a rolling pin for this. If you have something cylindrical like a wine bottle or anything else, then you can use that as well. There's all kinds of rolling pins. You can get a French pin, which is the one that's kind of goes to two points. Or there's just the rolling pins that's basically just like a large wooden dowel kind of that you can use. I kind of like to keep it old school because you have the option of using it as any other rolling pin, but you can also use the handles, which makes it a little bit easier. You're gonna turn it quarter way so you can roll it out so that it kind of makes a rounder shape. that's not going to damage where you're working on. You can also roll this out on a cutting board if you're more comfortable with that doing that as well, or if you have something big enough. All right, so any scraps you can save. Pie dough freezes really well, so if you don't use all the pie dough, you can freeze it for another time and make an apple pie at a later date. our pie dough nice and cut and roll out and align it in our pie tin. So what we're going to do is to make it easier to put it, to move it in the shell, we're going to fold it in half and then normally, depending on how much flour you put, you might have some excess on the shell and you're going to want to take a pastry brush and brush some of that off or even just use your hand if you don't have one, just be gentle. Flip it to the other side, the same thing. Now when you're putting in the pie shell, you want to try and get it as best or as close to the middle as you possibly can. Um, so luckily there's like this little circle that kind of helps you figure out where the middle is and then you want to look at the sides too to make sure that it's not off-center. So now we have it about in the middle. We're going to unfold it. And even if you're a little off, you can gently move it once it's in the shell to get more even. Now we have our shell in the pie tin. 
what you're going to do is, this excess sticking up, we're going to use that as our edge. So you're going to fold it under so that it's about half inch to an inch above the pie tin. Do that all the way around. It's absolutely perfect. It'll look nice once you flip it. Okay. Now we have a somewhat nice edge. You're going to take your pointer and your thumb on one hand, whichever hand you prefer. I'm left handed, so I use my left hand. You're going to put it on the inside of the shell, and you're going to take your other pointer finger. What you do is, it's about an inch apart. You're going to push the pie dough in between those fingers so you get this nice fluted edge there. Okay? You do that all the way around the shell. And depending on how far apart your fingers are, you can make the flute smaller, you can make it bigger. It's kind of a personal preference. So my shell's a little wonky, but um, this is about what you want to look at, what you want it to look like. So yeah, there's a nice edge around the outside. It's about the same size. Okay, now that our pie shell is chilling in the cooler, um, we're going to start the apple pie filling. It's best to sit for a little bit, so I like multitasking, so that's what we're going to do. So, pie hack, when you're peeling pretty much anything, actually, apples, potatoes, whatever, when you put a piece of plastic wrap down and you peel on it, you can just pick up that plastic wrap and throw it away, so it's easier to clean up. Um, so this is probably my favorite peeler for apples just because of the ease of use and it just makes more sense. Um, I normally like to peel the top and the bottom first. So you kind of have like a guide. And I just go around the outside and cut skin pieces off as I go. So we'll throw these guys away. Okay. Make sure you're very careful when using a knife. Don't leave your fingertips out, so be safe. Um, normally, I cut around the core in kind of a square pattern. So I'll cut one first, put it on this flat surface so it's less likely to roll, then use my hand as a guide and cut the rest of the pieces off. Okay, so your core should probably be about an inch square to have the correct amount of apple. Alright. And when you go to cut your apples, you want them to be about an eighth of an inch thick. So we're just going to cut slices. Okay. About an eighth of an inch thick. Alright, so I'm going to cut the rest of these apples and we'll get back to the apples cut and in a nice big ish size bowl, we're going to add our lemon juice, brown sugar, white sugar, salt, and then our apple pie spice. And uh, you can either, if you don't have, if you want to make this again, you don't have apple pie spice, you're welcome to use nutmeg and cinnamon. And of course, if you like cinnamon like I do, you can add extra cinnamon because there's no such thing as too much cinnamon. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix this all together until it's nice and incorporated. So you can either do this by hand with gloves on or with a spatula if you're more comfortable. You just want to make sure that your apples are all nicely coated. <coughs> And then we're going to let this mixture sit for 30 minutes. The reason we do that is because the salt and the sugar and the lemon juice is going to pull out <coughs> some moisture from the apples. So that way, when we go to bake our pie, they're already kind of a little bit soft. It'll bake quicker and we get to really concentrate all those flavors. So once your apples are nice and coated, Pie scrap and cover our bowl, and then just let these hang out on workspace until they've been sitting for about 30 minutes. It doesn't have to be exact, you don't need to put a timer on, just kind of, for example, it's 10 o'clock right now, we'll look at them at 10.30. Set these aside, and set 
since I did say that I like multitasking, we're going to make our old streusel while those are chilling. So we have our all-purpose flour, oats, brown sugar, and salt. I'm going to put all those in our mixing bowl. You can use the same mixing bowl you used earlier. It doesn't have to be clean. You can just get as much pie dough gunk out as you possibly can. I like to mix this just a little bit so that everything kind of marries together nicely before I add the butter in. We're going to mix this on low speed. While that's mixing, I'm going to grab my cold cube butter that will break again. Okay. So that's nice and nicely mixed. We're going to dump our cold butter in. Once to let go of the container. And everything's all nice and together. We're going to put our cold cube butter in there a bit. Once to, you know, let go from the container. And then continue mixing that on low speed. We'll get our dirties out of the way. Because we don't want color here. Alright. So again with this, the butter is, you're going to kind of mix it similar to pie dough, but the butter is going to incorporate a little bit more. And you're going to have a different consistency in close here. Um, what you want to see is the mixture is going to look kind of like wet sand and the butter is incorporated mostly into the dry. You might have a little bit of chunks left, but um, get it close. This is about what you want. Okay, so it's kind of like a wet sand consistency. If you squish it together, it turns into like a little ball. And you're going to be tempted to throw it at someone who down and makes a mess. Not speaking from experience. <laughs> Um, so it's kind of what you want, alright? So what we're going to do with this now is we're going to put it into a bowl, cover it in a plastic wrap and just kind of let it hang out on your station again. I guess it'll be easier to sprinkle on your pie when it's about roomish temperature. When it's chilled, it kind of chunks together a little bit, makes it a little bit more difficult. So we're going to do that. And magically now that our apples have been sitting for 30 minutes. It's going to fit seven apples in it. So, we're going to get all of our apples in here and all that delicious liquid at the bottom. Strain it out. Grab a spatula. Also, if you don't have a spatula yet, I highly suggest getting one because they're amazing. You can't really scrape as well with anything else, like a plastic spoon or a wood spoon. You kind of get all the nooks and crannies with the spatula. It's just easier to use. So, we're going to scrape all that delicious stuff out to our strainer. And at this point in time, you want to get as much of this liquid off the apples as you can. So that you have a drier start and your pie will have, it will be so watery when you cook it. Um, another thing I forgot to mention is I really like to use Granny Smith apples for anything pastry because they have a lower sugar content so you can kind of customize the sweetness um, and they're a bit hardier. So I mean you can use whatever apple you want, like Gala, Old Delicious, Red Delicious, just try and, try and get an apple that's a little bit harder because the softer the apple, your pie might turn into applesauce before it's fully cooked. So just for future reference. Now, that all of our apples have released their goodness. We're going to dump them back into the bowl that we had before. Get all those out there. Okay. I'm going to take our cornstarch. I'm going to dump it in here. 
uh, soy apples and cornstarch, just will thicken your apple pie syrup once it's baking. Or all this delicious liquid we just strained off. We're going to put that in the saucepan. Scrape all that out. And with this, we're going to add our butter. So we're going to reduce this to about a third of a cup. It's going to caramelize a little bit. It's going to get nice and thick. To reiterate, the reason we're doing this is so that our apple pie isn't too watery and we kind of expedite the baking process. So, kind of burning on the sides or on the bottom. And we'll reduce this nicely. Wire now. You're going to have lots of bubbles. It's going to thicken a lot. Um, we're almost to about a third of a cup. You see how it kind of pokes the back of the spatula? That's what you want. Okay, so we're going to cook it down a little bit more. So sometimes it helps if you can't really tell if it's the right amount because it's bubbling too much. If you take it out the heat, the bubble should go away and you'll see how much you have left. This is about a third, little bit more than a third of a cup. This is the right consistency we want. Okay, so we're going to take our nice delicious little syrup here and we're gonna put it back on our apples. Okay, as much as you can out of there. And so careful, the syrup's really hot, so if you're more comfortable using a spatula, you can use a spatula certain. I'm just going to use my hands because I like to lift quite dangerously. So we're going to incorporate that yummy syrup as best we can. So you see how our apples are nice and coated. That's what we want. Yeah. Now it's time to assemble our pie, the best part. Our schmusel, our filling, and then I included a piece of parchment in our, your kit for you, so that way when you're assembling and you make a mess, it's easier to clean up. So I'm going to grab my pie shell and put it over enough to fill the shell. Once it bakes, it's going to be kind of a saggy, sad looking apple pie. So we always mound up apple pies like this. Try and get that in the corners. Put all that syrup in there. as much of the apples as you can because any apples that are left uncovered are going to burn in the oven. At this point your oven should be set to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. If, you're, if you end up deciding to do a double crust pie instead or at a later date then you're going to want to turn your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. I lower the temperature for the oat streusel because all of all the fat and sugar in it and it tends to brown a little bit quicker than a pie dough would. I also had my oven here set a little bit lower because this convection oven, so it's a little bit more powerful than your regular conventional oven. So if you do have a convection oven at home, maybe lower your temperature 20 to 30 degrees, depending on how powerful you can kind of test it out to. Okay, well we got all of our apples coated. I think we're ready to go in the oven. Look at that. All right. in the center rack as best you can. Um, depending where your heat source is, you want to make sure that you have even cooking. 
so that things don't brown before other things are cooked. All right, let's sound like our pie is done. Our final product. Um, so for me it was in the oven for about 45 minutes. It might take you between 45 and 55 minutes. You probably want to turn it at least once. Um, probably halfway or three quarters of the way through. What you look for is if the streusel and the pie dough in the front are starting to brown a little bit and that's usually my cue to turn it. It kind of depends on your oven and how intense your fan is and all kinds of factors. Um, you see how, ni how, how much it's, it's sunk a little bit? That's why we add extra apples, because no one wants a sad slice of apple pie. Well, thank you for hanging out with me today and making some delicious food. Um, good luck with your apple pies, and please send me pictures.